right. Got something special for all of you fans out there. I told you this was going to happen, and here we go. We got USCJ, who is a guest over here on Unfair Sports for the day. USCJ, what's good, my man? What's up, man? Hey, I appreciate you having me on, man. Good to be here, man. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. I'm glad that we was able to get a chance to collab. I've been wanting to put something together the last few weeks, but all of our schedules have been crazy. I've been traveling. I know you've been traveling and everything. And so finally we've connected. So I want, I thought it would be perfect for us to get together and chop it up about week zero. Um, Those games that just passed this past weekend, as well as the latest set of recruits that have come through at USC, as well as OU. We can talk a little bit about coaches and stuff and kind of dive from there. So uh, did you did you get ingrained in college football uh, yesterday man, or was it absolutely, Saturday? <laughs> absolutely, man. My day started off with uh, with a little, I think, some high school football actually, but then I got I got involved with some uh, Nebraska and and uh, Northwestern, man, which was absolutely. We already know what time it is with Scott Frost, man. Scott Frost was absolutely lost in the sauce for making that crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy onside kick, man. And then then I got involved with a little bit of uh, uh, Florida A and M. And uh, look, fam, you in uh, North Carolina, man. So I was interested in it, man, this weekend. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, about the same, man. I got in at uh, the Nebraska game. I had some appointments to do in the morning. My son had a soccer game, and then I jumped right into that Nebraska game. And looking at that, I'm trying to understand. Let's Yeah, let's start there. That's probably the first game that would be good to talk about. What the hell is that with Scott Frost, man? Did they leave him <laughs> on the tarmac in Dublin? Is he? Did he come home? Because I'm curious. Did, he, did they actually bring him home? Because that was abysmal. It was, man. And you, you would think the fact that his record and, and him, somebody that's kind of considered, if you look at some of the hot seat coaches, Florida State, um, the, you know, uh, Scott Frost, that you would think he would kind of be a little more conservative, man. And you were already up, I think, eleven points, if I'm not mistaken, nine or eleven, something like that. And uh, he he decides to onside kick it. It's like, I mean, what are, are you? Do you not have confidence in your defense? They've already brought you thus far, so that really kind of threw me for a loop, man. Surprised me. Yeah, it threw me off with the onside kick as well. When I went back and watched it, I went ahead and recorded it, and I'm like, but why? Like, yeah. but why? Why did you do that? And and I heard he gave an explanation. And to be honest, I really don't want to hear it at this point because it made no sense. You're playing against Northwestern. You're both in another country. You're both probably exhausted because of the time difference. Why would you put your players in that situation? But overall, Nebraska offensively didn't look too bad. Their defense right. looks like it's going to be awful. And I know a lot of people really want to see Oklahoma lose to them in Week Three. It ain't happening. This is going to be I probably a right. uh, <laughs> blowout. <laughs> wow. So Oklahoma actually does play them, man. They, You know, Nebraska didn't look bad, but, you know, here's the thing. Some people actually pick Nebraska um, to go, I think, to the Big Ten Championship, man, believe it or not. They, they had enough faith in Scott Frost to think he was actually going to take them there. And, man, I've I seen Scott Frost actually make some weird decisions like that last year, too, man, if I'm not mistaken. He did. He's infamous for his uh, oddball choices and going against Northwestern, who Pef is, <sighs> Pef Gerald is not a bad coach. No, he's, he's not. He's actually, I think he, he's, not. I think he's a solid coach. He's a lifer to me. Right. He's one of those lifer coaches to where it's hard to judge him. He's kind of like, I feel like about David Shaw to the same way about yeah. him. Right, it's, right. They're going to have good years. They're going to have bad years. But the school is yeah. really indifferent because they're consistent, at least keeping them, their names. Right. And and they're right. not going to bolt for a bigger job. So right. he's a lifer. So I don't expect him to be great. I actually don't expect him to be bad. But I don't understand how Nebraska just – it just felt like they weren't prepared. Like, no. Did they no. look like they were off? That, that, I, I wouldn't say necessarily off. But, but you know, the – Northwestern, you, you mentioned uh, Stanford, they kind of have the same brand of football, man. They kind of line up and just kind of do what they do. Scott Frost, and you're right, absolutely right. David Shaw put me in the same mind mind frame. And, uh, man, it just, yeah, yeah, I guess you can say not prepared, man, because they, they're pretty predictable, uh, pretty much like telegraphing your throw. They're pretty predictable as to what they're going to do. A pretty simple assignment. There's nothing, nothing special about Northwestern, you know what I mean? And I just – I don't know, man. I don't know the, the defensive planning group, man, how they put that thing together was just was just not a good game plan to me at all. Yeah, it just, I just didn't feel like they was prepared. I, I guess that's where I'm kind of getting with that. It, it just did not feel like Nebraska was 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 here to win. <laughs> it yeah. felt like they were on vacation, and that's the last thing you want 
your team to look like, especially playing on national television across the sea. So, yeah. Now the question is: Is does does Scott Frost last past October first? October first is the buyout date, basically for Scott Frost. That's the date whenever his contract, the buyout amount goes down. I believe it's like by five million. Yeah. Do you think he lasts past October first? Man, that seems like it's gonna it's gonna you know he's the hometown hero, man. He played there, you know. I, I think it's gonna be a kind of a bittersweet thing. I. I think they can win some games, man, but it, it depends on his coaching. And it depends on, you know, what adjustments he makes. Uh, but if, if if he comes out, you know, losing the first, what, the second game and third game and fourth game, man, it's going to be hard to hard to keep that job, man. I think yeah. so. I can totally see that. I can totally see that as well. I, I'm thinking by October 1st, if he doesn't, if they lose that Oklahoma game really bad, it's done. I think his. I think at that point they just they just they walk out of the the uh, the, yeah. the stadium and say, "Yeah, man, just don't eat, just go home and stay." There's no reason to yeah. keep you. So, all right, let's jump into the next game that I think that was pretty good. You were watching that North Carolina Florida A and M game, right? I was, man. It was very surprising, man. Um, and North Carolina, North Carolina, you know, I mean, Mac Brown. They usually had the firepower, but they kind of ended on a sad note. Uh, 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 well, a not winning note, uh, losing to South Carolina <laughs> last season in the bowl. Well, this year in the bowl game, and so I was, but I was expecting them with the talent they had. Florida A and M had twenty five players gone, man, and they still was able to keep up with North Carolina. Was like, man, are you kidding me? And they looked very competitive. Well, I think when you text me last night, the score might have been twenty one to fourteen, man. I mean, they maintained a close game all the way close to the fourth quarter, man. It, it's North Carolina start pulling away in the fourth quarter, which was like, this is this can't be serious. Right, right. They they, they lucked out by going into half twenty eight to fourteen. But when I was looking at the game itself, I'm like, wait, why is Florida A and M scoring? This is not right. Now I like Drake May. I, I, I'm 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 high on that kid yeah. so far. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm now a fan, and I'll be watching yeah. him this season. But yeah, man. For them to let Florida A and M missing all those players after all that controversy, for them to let them keep this score close, I'm a little concerned yeah. about what North Carolina's going to do. I don't even think they're going to really compete in the ACC if they're going to be doing that. So, how, I mean, how, the thing is, how do we how do we actually how do we actually judge North Carolina based on that performance, based on uh, Florida A and M, uh, uh, FAMU uh, having all those players gone? Man, I mean, 25 players. How do we? I mean, and they even lost an offensive lineman, another starting offensive lineman while the game was going on, and they were still able to still hold their own, man. So how do we judge North Carolina uh, to be a real threat in anybody's ACC? Right, like, like at all. like if, Especially if you're letting FAMU with all those missing players do that to you. It, they weren't getting pushed around, but it didn't feel like North Carolina was pushing them around, like I would have expected. Right, I guess later in the game, as the game started to weigh down, those lack of players start to show. So they came yeah. out with, of course, firepower with energy at the beginning of the game, and then as the game started going on, you started noticing that fam, you was not going to be able to keep that keep that momentum that they were going throughout it. So playing off adrenaline ain't something you want to do. So right. I don't know. Right. Right. <laughs> they start pulling Let's away. Jump. They start looking like they start looking like a real power five school, you know, in the fourth quarter. But it took them a minute to get you know to adapt it, man, to the to the game. I mean, it was kind of. Yeah. Kind of a strange little situation. Yeah, I'm looking at that schedule coming up, man. It, it, it's not something that you want to do. Luckily, they got their well, they got Appalachian State. They're traveling to and Georgia State. Yeah. But once Notre Dame come to town, they play Notre Dame the 24th. But man, let me tell you something about Appalachian State, man. Um, I seen them beat South Carolina like was it last, the year before last? That's not a team that you could just think you're gonna come run over. You know what I mean? They they're <laughs> they kind of they got some athletes there at Appalachian State, and uh, oh yeah, they might, they might better prepare for them if they play like the way they played on Saturday. They'll lose that game. Yeah, I'm looking at the um, the, the matchup prediction. It looks like there's a 45 percent chance that App State wins that game. And if that's the case, even Is though I saw true? Appalachian State when they beat who was that Michigan a good 10 plus years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If 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 that's the case, yeah, North Carolina, who buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all got a lot of work to do with Mac Brown. So, all yeah. right, let's jump into these recruits, man. Kobe Lane, talk man. to me. How you feeling about him? I saw that come through. I, I he was him, he was crystal balled to go to Oregon for a while, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. all of a this, sudden, 
Yeah. So. Man, it just, it just, it kind of, it was kind of surprising, man. And this is like the third recruit in a row that we've already flipped uh, from Oregon. Um, Eleni Noah, which was a big offensive lineman, we just flipped him. Yeah. Um, then of course we flipped uh, Michael Benuelas, who was who was actually going to go to Oregon, and then now Jacoby Lane, man. So man, this is a big, tall, long guy, man. Six four. Some some sites have him at six five, one hundred eighty pounds. He's a long receiver. You know, we got three three excellent receivers, man. We got the number one overall receiver, which is Zachariah Branch, and uh, man, he's just a, he's he's an absolute monster. And then we got uh, Makai Lemon. And so you throw him in there, and those are sort of guys. You throw him in there with these guys, man, to give us a good group, a good balance, because you always want to have a big, tall receiver play on the outside, and he's going to afford that opportunity for us now that we have him, man. So he, I love him, man. Yeah, looking at some of his stuff, man, it looks like um, looks like he got he got some little basketball to him. Like he can go up there to yeah. the high point and get the ball, especially as tall and skinny yeah. as he is, or yeah. whatnot. Yeah. So. He could be something special. I mean, it, lo- it looks like Lincoln's putting some stuff together. And so, of course, you know, we got, yeah. you know, USC, Jay on here with me, Jay, for uh, with Unfair Sports. Again, thanks for jumping on and uh, recording and chopping it up with me, man. So expectations for the year, man, with with, with, Lane, with, with, uh, with Lincoln Riley, man. How you feeling? I know you weren't about to put a Lane Kiffin on me, man. <laughs> I almost did. I almost did. I almost thought, like, I hate the Lane train, by you the way. Do that right and, here, man. <laughs> like, I like him, but I don't like him all at the same time because of what he did <laughs> no, out there at like... USC. My other team is Tennessee, and he did us really yeah. dirty. So, oh, dirty, yeah, everything man. about he did, that. <laughs> he did you guys dirty, man. But realistic expectation, I think, given the transfer portal, and I always say this to anybody who, who tries to tune in and wants to know, uh, and I got to do it. I got to give you a long answer, not long answer, but somewhat long answer. But Michigan yeah. State, Michigan State, uh, one year, they I think prior to the year from last year, they had two wins, came in, knocked out the transfer portal. They had 11, and, they went 11 and two last year. And we're the number one overall transfer portal with I think about 18 portal players. All these guys were starters on other teams. So a lot of people, I don't think that they're factoring that in. So my, I said that to say that my expectations is extremely high based on the transfer portal players and the quality of transfer portal. We don't just have transfer portal players just fill a slot. We got guys that are coming in like an Eric Gentry, who's a freshman All-American linebacker last year who started there at Arizona State. He's coming in starter. Of course, Caleb Williams, Mario Williams. You got uh, a Makai Blackman out of Colorado, cornerback. Uh, so you got we got several guys that I feel like will come in and make an instant impact as a result. That's why you see Ben.com or different different bed sites are actually having us win the Pac-12. Of course, we got to get to Utah, but my realistic expectations is to maybe maybe I would say 11 and one, but I'm maybe 12 and 0. Just that, that Utah game is going to be a problem. It's going to be 50 50 because I mean that's going to be a rough rough going to uh, Rice Echo Stadium. That's going to be a rough game to play at, man. So that's. That's kind of where we at with it. That's where I'm at with it, and uh, most of the betting sites as well. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen that a lot of people have faith in what Lincoln Riley can do day one there. And I'll be honest, you know, even as a quote unquote biased Oklahoma fan, Lincoln Riley is really good at his job. He's really good on yeah. the offensive side. He was great at East Carolina. He was great when he came to Oklahoma, putting together more creative things and going there, bringing in the local recruits because he did a lot of recruiting out West. Yeah, he's going to do some special stuff specifically yeah. for USC. So I cannot be mad at him for yeah. what he is going to be able to do. The question is, is it going to be sustainable long term? And what exactly is Alex Grinch going to do on that defense? Now, I'll give him this. Alex did coach at West, uh, Washington State, so he has yeah. a good understanding of Pac-12 teams and what you need to do Absolutely. to prepare for those type of teams. So I'm yeah. curious to see how do you feel about that defense and who you think is going to be the impact players coming in. Man, I feel I feel pretty good about the defense. I'm not necessarily a three-three-five kind of guy, man. I mean, it, it, it's a different type of defense. But I did go back and I looked at some stats um, prior to Alex Grinch actually coming to Oklahoma. He he came in 2019, but prior to three years prior to that, 2016, 17, and 18, I looked at the numbers. It, he improved that defense by like 100, 100 yards, man. Um, from 2016 to 2019, it was 100 yards worse. And then when he came in, he improved it by 100 yards. So I kind of feel okay. And I know he likes a smaller athletic type of defensive uh, defensive uh, players as it relates to the, the rush in. They call them rush ins. 
which is traditionally almost like an outside linebacker. So I feel like it's okay. And I think Eric Gentry, the guy that came from Arizona State, Solomon Bird, who was actually uh, at Wyoming and uh, put up some crazy numbers and committed to Georgia State, but Georgia Tech, but we flipped him. I think he's going to be an impact player. Sean Lee, the transfer from Alabama. Linebacker, I think he's going to be an impact player. Ramillo Height, transfer from Auburn. DN, I think he's going to be an impact player. So I think we got some guys, man. And also the safety from uh, from Ohio State, Bryson Shaw, man. I think he's going to be, you know, he led the team. He was third, second in tackles last year at Ohio State, starting safety. So I think we got some guys, man, that's going to come in and make some plays happen, man, make some things happen. I can see it, man. I can see it. So you think that the biggest threat y'all have is Utah? No, it's it's gonna it's gonna be Utah, UCLA, and uh and I will say Notre Dame. And then Oregon State can be kind of tricky too, man. We can't sleep on them. But let me say this. We opened up with Rice. Now that sounds kind of funny though, but I'm I'm gonna tell you something. I watched Rice last year play Arkansas at the beginning of the season. Took them all the way to the fourth quarter. I said, you know what? I'm not sleeping on nobody, man. I mean, not, I'm not sleeping on Rice because if you go to Arkansas and play at Arkansas and put up them points like that, looking kind of athletic, I said, you know, man, I, yeah, we can get lost in the sauce thinking it's just Rice. And I'm trying to, I want us to keep the focus <laughs> and, you know, game by game, man. You know what I mean? I'm not taking Rice for granted either. No, no, no. And then that's that, and you can't do that, especially nowadays. Yeah. Arkansas yeah. with, with Pittman, the way that he's running that, that, that program, they got something special there, and, and I'm special. I'm I'm in on them. I'm in on them, and the fact, like you said, Rice was able to give them some competition is definitely a reason for you to have to keep your eye open just in case going in. So with that, so week one, what's your what's your prediction that you got for week one with your with your boys? Man, I think we're gonna be about forty three. It's gonna be maybe forty three to maybe seven somewhere around there. I'm picking that game okay. score. I, I don't know. Some people think it's going to be 50, 60, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, we, we're going to, we're trying to jail together. This is going to be the first game, even though we play screen together, we got a little bit of experience together, but this is not going to be a, this is an actual full time game here, man. So I think it's going to be a little filling out period and see how we're going to come together. And uh, I, I still think the coaches, we haven't had a death trap yet. So I still think the coaches are still trying to get a real feel for who they want to play. So, this would be a good fill-out game, man. I'm glad we're not opening up with LSU like we do next year. Oh, boy. Yeah, now that, <laughs> that, my man, is what I'm ready for. I yeah. am ready to see what Lincoln does against LSU <laughs> in the rematch, especially yeah. going up against Brian Kelly in his new form setup. Um, yeah. To be honest, the, the, the Rice game is definitely something – I like that you point as a concern. I'm hoping it's not a lookover game for you all where right. the game ends up being closer than it's supposed to be because you, you're right. traveling to Stanford the next week. David Shaw always puts together something good. Now, yeah, he ain't always got good seasons. Yeah, I'm not sleeping <laughs> on him either, man. Yeah, I, well, he'll you know, put together some good teams. A, he's a heck of a coach, man. And that quarterback, man, that they got is uh, <laughs> that dude is one of the best quarterbacks in the Pac-12. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm still surprised that man at the end, that they still haven't pulled him away. The NFL hasn't pulled him away to yeah. to go. But no, this is exactly yeah, that's exactly the deal. We we don't know what what they're gonna do, um, in, inside and out when it comes to David Shaw. You don't know if he's gonna stay, if he's gonna leave. Correction, we know he's gonna stay, but the NFL has yeah. been begging for him for years. Teams have for been years. begging yeah. him to yeah. walk away, and he's like, nah, I like the comfort here because why? They let me do what I want to do. Yeah, and yeah. so, and so, yeah. This, this is who's this? Tanner McKee is they starting quarterback this year? It's, it's Over there at Stanford, from, who they got? Who they is? This, is it Tanner? I think it is Tanner is going to be their Tanner starting McGee. quarterback. Yeah, this yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, shoot, he, he gonna pull up some numbers. Oh so, yeah, he's a quarterback. Y'all quarterback, be prepared. Man. He's a quarterback, and, and you, you know, you know, the West Coast ain't never had. We've never had a quarterback problem, man. I mean, all our quarterbacks from the West Coast, you know, they come. You look at Alabama, Bryce Young, you did C.J. Stroud, Ohio State, all these California guys, you know, Ole Miss quarterback last year, all these quarterbacks in California, we've never had. So that that's really all through the Pac-12, man. We we got quarterbacks like crazy. So you we just got to be ready to play some ball, man, and really uh, defensive backs get on their horse, man, make sure we uh locking these guys down. Yeah, you got to be able to keep them in town. That's that's the hardest part, I'd say, if anything. The hardest part is keeping the talent local unless you got people that can do it. And the way that Nick Saban 
and Ryan Day and them were trying to st- was stealing from out there. Yeah. Hell, Lika Riley was here in Oklahoma bringing them boys to uh, OU. You got to be able to pull some of those players back. And I think yeah. if, if if USC can get win in state, win in state on a regular yeah. basis, fend off Oregon, fend off well, UCLA, I don't consider a problem. I mean, I like Chip Kelly and all, but I don't. I don't yeah. see Chip Kelly being a problem for y'all. But no. fending off all of those schools, there's no reason yeah. that USC shouldn't be, I guess you could say, back is what we would call it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool, man. Cool, man. What? So what, what What else you got? What else are you looking forward to as far as recruits go? You got anybody in mind that you guys are hoping to win in the next couple of weeks? Man, it's, uh, it's quite a few, man. Big Deuce Robinson, man, out of Arizona. Pinnacle, Arizona. Hey, hey, what's up with him? What's up with him? Let's start there. What's up he, with him? He is um <laughs> I think he's 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 making some visits, man. I think he gotta go to Alabama and a couple other schools, but Georgia and but, but I mean he's a he's a he's a big time athlete, man. Um he's a two sport guy. Uh he played baseball, football, so uh I think he's just making his rounds, man. But I mean we we're expecting him. Uh we're expecting a couple other guys, man, as well. Uh, Mateo out of St. John Bosco, big D, D, uh, D line guy. They just went down there and just smashed Allen. Allen going out there getting smashed, man. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah St. John Bosco, man. Hey, man. Hey, Cali got the best. Hey, Cali got the best high school football, man. Hey, you gotta, you gotta think about it, man. Modern day went down to the Duncanville last year and put it on them. You, you hit, you, you, I mean, <laughs> we, we got it, man. <laughs> we got it in Cali. I, I, I'll say Cali's abusing Texas right now. That is something I can definitely agree with. Now, the hey, question's hey, going to be. Hey, let's, say, let's say it like this. Cali is running Texas right now, man. <laughs> man, hey, all these Texas fans are going to be mad when they, they hear this. Hey, they're going to be mad at me. Tell them I said fight on, though, man. It's all right. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. I appreciate you pulling up, USCJ. I'm gonna let you let you make the magic happen for the weekend. You ready for the? I know you're ready for week one, man. What which yeah, USC man. game are you trying to hit up this year? Man, I I, no, I want to do Notre Dame. I think I told you Utah, and and uh, I'm gonna decide which other ones I'm gonna hit up, man. But uh, but yeah, yeah. This this is a big season, man. This is a this is a USC back season. So man, we are expecting big things, man, and um. Uh, we want the fans to come out in large numbers, man. I know you guys are expecting the same thing with Oklahoma. By the way, I love your quarterback, Gabriel, that came from Central Florida. I absolutely love that guy, man. I think he's a winner if he can stay healthy. Agreed, man. I'm thinking that between CW, uh, with Caleb, and, and Dylan, the Heisman's going to be interesting this year because both of them going to put up numbers in, in both yeah. systems, irregardless yeah. of anybody any says. As long you know, barring injury and they both stay healthy, there's going to be yeah. uh, numbers are going to be thrown up. I'm I'm expecting. I mean, hell, Dylan Gabriel's got over eight thousand yards in his career already. He was a, he was a and baller, man. He was a straight baller. baller. Yeah, with with Jeff Lebby as his OC to start his career, so he knows yeah. what's going on. He's ready for it. Yeah. The question is going to be as long as they can put it all together, man, and all these receivers get going. I, you, I see both you schools think, is going to be they're actually going to do. I, I mean, because I know this. It's always kind of a. Nobody's actually been a head coach until they actually a head coach. So how do you right. think they're actually going to going to do? I've always kind of wondered what an Oklahoma fan really think. I know I know the hype is there, but I mean, what, what's your honest opinion? Okay, so in in my honest, unbiased opinion about this, I don't see a reason why OU doesn't win the Big Twelve this year. Um, what what benefits them the most are two things. One, yes, Brent Venables has never been a head coach. But right. He's also run defenses that have been in national championships. He'll focus only on the defense. He won't worry about yeah. the offense. Jeff yeah. Levy has been part of some of the most explosive offenses in the country. He remember he was underneath Art Browse back, you know, back in the Baylor days. He was underneath yeah. that explosive offense. Lane Kiffin, Josh Heupel, OU guy who was also putting together some explosive offenses. So he's had some tutorage from some greats. That to me means that Venables is going to look at him and say, run it. You run this right. offense and you make this happen. Do what you can to sometimes give my defense a break, but dominate. And right. if Venables and his squad, they'll put together the defense. I think this is the, 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 the biggest thing that's that a lot of people when judging Oklahoma hasn't been taken in consideration is that traditionally when you bring in a coach, 
they usually bring, put, do bits and pieces when it comes to their def- their staff, right? You know, right. new coach, they're going to bring in a new DC who either hasn't been one or has been one somewhere else. They're going to come in and create a new system and bring in a new guy here, a new guy there. Venables brought everybody from Clemson. Like yeah. everybody but the but the corner cornerback, <laughs> Jay Valai, the corners right. coach. Because right. Valai was at Alabama. So he brought in all of these dudes that have been working together for years. Ted Roof, uh, right. Todd Bates. They've been together. So it makes it so much easier to start a job. Chavez, it, it, to, to have all of these people that have worked together for years to just come move, yeah. move states, that's what's different to me. That's the same thing I got for Lincoln Riley at USC. He brought yeah. a lot of the staff that he worked with with his Absolutely. offense. Absolutely. What, what, he doesn't have to. It's not. It's not piecemeal and stuff like he that right. normally. You know, new coaches have to do so. Right. To me, right. I really do think that Oklahoma has a really good chance of just winning the Big Twelve, or yeah. I think they go at worst ten and two. I think that. Yeah, I think that there are two losses in there somewhere that are hidden and. That Baylor, and, man, man, and, Baylor is that man. Just the way they. That's the only team I kind of wondered about. Man, I think Texas is about to be lost in the South completely, man. <laughs> Dave Aranda be doing it, man. Dave Aranda's a great man, coach. And I mean, we saw what he did at uh, uh, LSU, especially a working a, for Ed Orgeron. He's a heck of a coach. And what they, how they manhandled Ole Miss in the bowl game was like, whoa. He worked for Ed Orgeron, and he was able to make sure that defense was 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 still stout. Everyone yeah. loved him at LSU, and they wanted him to stay. I mean, at that point, yeah. to be honest, I'm surprised they didn't try to force Orgeron out a year early and try to keep him. Like after that title, I, th- I, I am surprised. Gonna, I thought they were going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. I was like, when I saw that Aranda ended up at Baylor, I'm like, wait, LSU let him leave? Yeah. I figured they'd be coming to Ozron and be like, hey, man, we like you and all, but um, we won't keep him. So yeah. what you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> Type deal. Yeah, but, yeah, but and then he ends lot, up leaving and then talent, Ozron's man. out. He's got a lot of talent on the team. Yeah, that's the thing about it is that, and, and contrary to popular belief, Lincoln brought in a ton of talent there. Like, there's still a lot of talent that came yeah. from when Lincoln Riley was here. So it's not like the team just completely just got rid of every single player that was on the roster. Like, it's a right. starting from scratch. These are the same top recruits, top 10 recruiting classes that Riley yeah. had in his past. And Venables and staff has been known for being great at coaching guys up from three-star to four-star and four-star to late four-star or five-star. Yeah. That's been his M.O. the entire yeah. time he's been a defensive coordinator coming from Kansas State to Oklahoma to Clemson and now back coaching up. Yeah. That's what you do. And then adding yeah. Smitty back as the uh, the strength guy, Yeah, people in the NFL know Smitty. Let's put it like that. That, yeah. that that's the the thing. If you're if you're if you're built by Schmitty, they they like oh okay, you're you're trained and you're ready. You're gonna be in good shape. That's how those uh those A and M boys were starting to do good. Yeah, they they, yeah. they were pulling because of him. So overall, the biggest thing is that this team has all the pieces in place. The question is, is can they just put the mold together? And I don't know yet. That but I do I don't see any worse than ten and two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Like you yeah. said, like yeah. you said, Baylor, Baylor, I do have fear of. The only thing that's been good, and, and this is the last thing on it, OU has the most favorable schedule this year they've had in years. Yeah. The three toughest games are in Norman. You've got Baylor yeah. in Norman. You've got Oklahoma State in Norman. And, yeah. you know, one team that always gives us hell, Kansas State, and I don't know why. <laughs> They're in Norman. <laughs> yeah. And then you yeah. have the Red River, which is always neutral. But yeah, all the toughest games to be really concerned about are at home. And that's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what you want. That's what you desire to have, man. Exactly. It makes it it makes it a lot less, I guess you could say, stressful or whatnot. Like, like I said, yeah. looking at USC or whatnot, y'all got to go to Utah this year. That's yeah, the game that's, that's, that's scary. Because Utah that's, that's, is That's a major Utah. problem right there. Yeah, and everybody else is at the crib. And yeah. what says uh and Notre Dame's at the crib. That to me Yeah. Man, y'all I'm winning. so happy. <laughs> hey, I'm so happy Notre Dame. We lost thirty one to seventeen last year at Notre Dame with the with the up a, a crazy overturn, all kinds of coaching and just uncertainty, man, players being disruptive. Man, Notre Dame is in some trouble, bro. I'm telling you, right now they in some big trouble. <laughs> You know, I love what Marcus Freeman's doing. I think that's the thing that helps them the most is that there's a very little turnover, too. I mean, Brian Kelly yeah. got, I think, a couple people to leave. 
that's what's help going to help them going forward, especially now with this great class that he put together this year with oh, Brian Kelly. Left. It felt like it's kids killing. like, oh, wait, Brian's gone? Yes, yeah. we'll come to Notre Dame now. <laughs> yeah. Which is so bad. Yeah. Which is so bad. But Man, he is chilling and recruiting right now. He is. He's on one. And, and, that's, and that's a beautiful thing to see going – you know, with Notre Dame or whatnot, it's something that, that you want is them to be at a national power because they have one of the largest national followings. Right. Hey, man, you can't beat that. Yeah, most definitely. But we're going to get them this year, though. All right. Hey, you better. Yeah, we're going to get better. them. We're going to talk. We're going to definitely talk after that game. There's a few games we definitely going to have to talk after because oh, yeah. I'm really curious to how the response is going to be, especially that Utah game in, in October, which, ooh, man. That's gonna be a biggie. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll schedule some more time or whatnot. But uh, I'm gonna let you get to get to the get to the grind. Get to the grind. USCJ, thanks, man, for coming on and chopping it man, up with me, dog. You, I appreciate man. it. Appreciate you, man. We gonna do this again. Don't worry, Most all fans. Definitely. We're gonna do this again. We gonna, we gonna connect a lot more often. We'll probably bring in some more folks, um, especially post game or whatnot. So uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, my man.